welcome back to It's Covered, the insurance podcast, because if you think insurance is boring, then you are doing it wrong. I am one of your hosts, Paul. We are joined, as always, by Mel. Mel, how's it going today? It is going good. I'm just spinning the insurance DJ wheels of steel. <laughs> I don't want to really... I mean, I knew you were going to say something like that, and I still don't know how to play up. Okay, that's it. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> oh, and and that came from by, by the way, one of our friends. Um, one of our friends uh, sent us a message that um, that we really should start calling, uh, referring to Mel as DJ Melly Mel, and <laughs> and your your response was, do you remember? I don't remember, but I thought it was super cool, and we should start it right away. Uh, your, your response was, well, that explains why I don't talk very much. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I'm the rap. Uh, you're the DJ. I'm the rapper. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and there you go. To, yes. which, to which all of my friends, uh, you know, just, just did a spit take where um, – you know, I referred to myself as a rapper, and uh, they will mock me enlisted for that. Uh, but oh goodness! So um, yeah, episode three, and um, we I, look, we really appreciate. We're getting a lot of good feedback, uh, uh, feedback from people that uh, are, are really excited, that are are seeing, they're seeing what we're trying to do with this, they're seeing what we're trying to accomplish, and uh, we really appreciate that. We're really excited uh, about the future of of the podcast and what we're going to be discussing, and how hopefully. We're going to make all of us better at our jobs that, you know, that we're, we're going to, you know, that we're going to be able to start honing the skills of not just you and not just me, but all of us will be able to learn together. And so for those of you who uh, have jumped aboard this, this train and, and are really catching the vision already, I appreciate you being being back each and every week. I know you're in this for the long haul. For those of you who are just joining us, please do stick around. I, I think this, this is going to be actually a pretty fun episode. Uh, but, but do, you know, this is episode three. There's two other ones that you can download at any point, uh, to kind of get a fuller understanding of, of what we're about and, and how you can be part of it. So, um, Today, I want to I want to talk about insurance speak a little bit. Insurance speak, yeah. You say, yeah. So, and you ask as though you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, these, these are the, the these are the words that we use in in our industry that we understand each other. We know exactly what we're talking about and no one else does. And, and, and yet, and yet I continually hear insurance professionals talk like this to the civilians out there, to the people who, who are not well versed in insurance and insurance law and coverages and all this and don't have the foggiest clue what we're saying. And what's really funny about it is that a lot of times people just don't want to admit that they don't know what we're talking about. And, and so they just go, Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, until it's time for claims. <laughs> and they're like, wait now, wait, what does this do? <laughs> and then, and then yes, that is correct. And then they mask their, uh, uh, not knowing what the terms meant whenever they were supposed to ask the question by their anger at the claims person right, for exactly. telling for, you know, their claim not being handled the way they thought it should. Right, right. And I'll say, and I'll say claim the claim is the is the worst time for somebody to start learning their coverages. Because it, just the nature of claims, they've already lost something. It might be a minor accident, but there's already been an an impact that was 
definitely pun intended. There's already been something that's happened. And even with the most minor claim, you've lost some, some, something of value. It, it's been damaged. You've lost some substantial amount of time. I mean, think about it, even like the, like the most minor car accident. How long you actually stand there <laughs> exchanging information and taking pictures and stuff and then get on the phone and it takes five years to call in a claim and every, you know, f- you know, 20 different people want a recorded statement. And you don't know what's going on. This is the, like the most minor bumper repair. And it's a big ordeal. And so even on the minor claims, you've lost something. This is, this is a, str- it's, it's, it's usually a stressful situation. It's, uh, it's usually an emotional situation. And we're trying to learn coverages right now. It's, it's not the right time for it. And so, and, and I, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm aiming this at agents, but I'm also aiming this at adjusters, the adjusters who get frustrated trying to, you know, to, to, to get customers to understand what's going on without just sitting down and breaking it down to, to what I mean, what I'd call a street level, right? That, that, that people, that people can actually understand in non-insurance terms. And you are correct with that. That is a, a big problem, especially in claims, uh, because um, I hear it all the time because we're an insurance family. And um, one of the things that uh, my wife tries to do is explain situations to customers. And of course, uh, being in the sales side of it, I hear how they understand things and uh and and what i tell them but right. uh, mm-hmm. on the claim side it, it, it's totally different claims they they're very meticulous mat- well hold on let me get this right meticulous <laughs> mat- meticulous i'll change you need to be meticulous. meticulous about your pronunciation of the word meticulous it- exactly I'm, i think I'm... i'll just change it you have to be very precise <laughs> about the phrases and what you're explaining to the customer because Mm -hmm. you want to make sure they understand you don't want a lawsuit because if they get an attorney, then you don't want them to say you explained it wrong. So they explain to uh, not get in trouble, it seems, uh, instead of uh, explaining (laughs) to get the customer to understand. Yeah. Well, and yeah, and, and, and there's, and there's some circumstances, especially, especially in claims, I'll say that it's, it's almost impossible to give just a simple answer. I mean, I remember, uh, both of us worked in the personal injury protection department for a little bit and, and people call up, call me up and it's like, okay, is this coverage going to be covered? And, and, and there's, and, and there's no way for me to say yes or no to that question. Because I have to, you know, uh, you know, make sure that I have the, the proper, the proper form that I can review and the, uh, the doctor notes so that I can review it for reasonableness and necessity, uh, related to the accident. And, and that's, that's not, I mean, that, 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 that was often a question that I had to answer several times because people, didn't understand and just uh, me me hearing and, and and there were certainly worse people uh, explaining it i i remember several times overhearing somebody like a customer would send in a, a bill they got from a doctor that says hey here's a here's a past due balance pay it and some of the adjusters will go no we need that on a cms 1500 and I was like, why are you saying that to a customer? <laughs> why? I mean, <laughs> just, you know, say that to a doctor's office. Sure. But, you know, but, uh, but those, those questions are, are often very difficult to answer. And one of, uh, one of the ones that, um, that, that we were discussing the other day 
that is a has been a big problem point in claims is the inspection because if if the customer doesn't know what's going on the adjuster will actually come across very often as looking completely incompetent that is true and especially with the adjuster they're going to be de- be dealing not only with uh, the insured, but also with the claimant. So the claimant already has a chip on his shoulder because he's talking to the opposing insurance. And so he already thinks you're trying to slip something by them. Mm-hmm. And if you don't explain it to them the way they can understand, they think you're not hearing what they're saying. And uh, like like you said, the inspection, something as simple as taking a picture of the damages and sending an estimate with the customer to the body shop. Mm-hmm. Now, something that simple, you think, okay, great. The body shop will get the car in. They'll do an inspection of the vehicle with their professionals because they do this all the time. And they'll let you know exactly what it's going to cost to get fixed. Well, if the customer is already mad that an insured hit his vehicle and he wants his car fixed, he doesn't want to use aftermarket parts, he wants original equipment, and you're going to fix it where there's no problems, and then they get a an estimate from the adjuster that says, all right, your damages to your vehicle, which you're thinking is around $6,000, the estimate is going to say 1500 Right. Right. And then they actually get it to the shop and it's, you know, 6000 or 5000 or wherever. And, and and that's where it's like, what, you know, what kind of racket is this? Is the adjuster, you know, just, just an idiot? And that's fully what they're thinking. They're exactly. thinking that. Oh, I got those calls <laughs> constantly I, I, when I, when I was, uh, you know, was when I was working with agents to to fix the problems. It's like I would get these calls all the time. I, you know, it, you know, a parent, you know, your adjuster just uh, the the adjuster doesn't know what he's doing. You know, you need to go retrain him. You know, he thought this damage was fifteen hundred, and the go in the shop and they're finding all sorts of stuff the adjuster just missed and. And it's, it's one of those things like, yeah, that happens pretty much every claim. It's called the supplement. And it's simply because when, when we do our initial inspection, we are looking on the outside of a car. We can open the hood. That's pre- or, or we can climb underneath. That's pretty much it. But you start pulling off a panel and there's damage underneath. You cannot see that until the car is disassembled. And so there's always going to be, uh, pretty much always going to be, uh, some kind of, kind of, some kind of supplement. It's not, it's not that there's, that there's some sort of level of incompetence. It's that, Hey, we need to get an initial inspection in so we can get this thing into the shop. That is right. And so saying, um, okay, Mr. Johnson, I understand that you feel that our estimate was low, but it literally doesn't matter what we put on the paper. If I put $5, we're going to send it to the professionals so they can tell us what it actually is. So what I put down on the paper doesn't matter. So if you trust your mechanic or your body shop, then it doesn't matter what I put down because they're going to actually take care of you and fix your car and then we're going to pay it. Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, the the initial inspection does a lot of of really important work, but it, it's 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 the beginning of the process. It's not the end. And and the trouble is though, is that at at some point we are explaining that in a way that the customer's not understanding. And the amount of times I've gotten that phone call, you know, suggests to me that that's pretty widespread. So we are saying something that, you know, I, something about, you know, it's like, well, we provide the preliminary inspection of, a, uh, of the vehicle. And should the case uh, occur that the shop finds additional damage, they will file a supplement to which we will review and something nonsense that the customers glazing over with. And the customers are walking away from that conversation, not understanding, which is weird because. 
And Mel, I've heard you explain this to customers and you've heard me explain this to customers. And I don't know of a time that the customer hasn't understood at the end of that conversation. And so that suggests to me that we need to do better explaining it. And we can do better explaining it because they understand. And I, I, I think that is our job being in the agent's office to explain it with, to the customers because that is our expertise and not the claims person expertise. Our expertise is knowing our customer because whenever we first talk to them, it's get to know them, get to know their family, get to know their needs, get to know what coverage fits best for them, cover their most valuable items and things they cherish, and c- contact them on uh, key points throughout the year, mm-hmm. birthdays, uh, kids turning 16, getting driver's license. I, I Happy mean, birthday, we know kid. All this. Here's a... You know, giant bill. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> exactly. And the claims person does none of that. The claims yeah. person talks to them during the worst time in the person's life whenever uh, an, an accident happened or occurred, injuries happened or occurred, or even fatalities ac- uh, happened or occurred. And so they have to be to the point and um, explain, you know, the the situation, and um, and we understand that. But you also want to help the person because you're an extension of the entire cog, or you're of the entire uh, machine. Right. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're a cog, and, and, and you have to function properly to make sure everything functions properly. And <laughs> if the customer is not getting it, then uh, I'm sure if you're in claims, you've had it before where somebody in a totally different department didn't do their job, and you got a bad review because someone else didn't either oh, gosh, explain yes. something right or did not do their job. That's right. So you're a cog. Now go kick some ass. I didn't come there out. you go. <laughs> We're supposed to be you're inspiring, in Mel. Inst- come on. <laughs> That's right. No, 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 no I, I know My what you bad. mean. Let me, let, me, let me flip the track. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I totally get it. And, and, and this, and this is absolutely true. You know, it's like, uh, in, in the agency, first of all, we, we, we hopefully know our customer a little bit better than the claims adjuster does. Uh, and we also have a, I think we have a little bit more leeway, especially knowing the customer better that we can, we can, we can explain things, things a little bit better. But I don't want to let the adjusters off the hook because I did hear adjusters say stuff to a customer like, you know, the CMS 1500 and stuff. I heard an adjuster and thankfully I've only heard this once, but use the phrase coverage BB to a customer. <laughs> now I'll tell you what, Mel, I have, I've, I've been an adjuster for 10 years now. And when I started, when I started 10 years ago, we were already moving away from using phrases like coverage AA, BB, and all that good stuff. <laughs> we, we, I mean, that was already kind of fading into the past. And yeah, those things do exist. But you are literally using a phrase. And I want you to try this. I want you to try this. I want you to go to Google and... Type coverage BB because, because a lot of times your customer is not going to admit that they don't have the foggiest clue what you're talking about. And they're going to try to rely on Google or something to explain it to them later. I want you to try to Google coverage BB and see what you come up with. I did it earlier and I don't think that on the front page, there was anything that actually told me what it was. And so, you know, and and like I said, again, thankfully this, that only happened once, but we need to be watching how we, how we explain things. And that means on the adjuster desk and that means on the agent desk as well. Um, Something I, uh, something I heard in claims and we're going to do a whole episode on this one because when I say it, all of, all of you, all of you are going to groan, but I had full coverage. (laughs) 
That is, and, and the adjusters out there just shuddered. Just, I, you know, I heard you through your telephone just shudder. Um, because that, that is, uh, the, the 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 kind of the two sides of our industry uh, are using that phrase so differently that is causing a lot of confusion. And we're going to do a whole we're going to do a whole episode on that very very soon. That's actually on the on the list of of ones that are upcoming. Um, but I I mean, Mel, Mel, tell me tell me this. It's like how many times how many times when you are talking to grown ass men who have had homes for a long time and you calculate a replacement cost will say, well, my home's not worth that much or my home's worth more than that. Did you mean how many times today? Right, exactly. (laughs) It's like these people have owned homes for years. They've had multiple policies and no one, no one, no one has sat down with them and explained what replacement cost means. And, And I think too often we just kind of assume that people know that. But I mean, but where else, where else are they going to run across that term when it comes to their house? Well, what values do they know about their house? They know, they know the, the market value, which they want it to be as high as possible. And they want the tax, they know the, the, the tax value, which they want it to be as low as possible. No one is thinking in the terms of replacement cost. And I think whenever you explain it to them properly, you can almost see the light coming on through the phone. And yeah. they just understand and they never have a problem with it after that. Right, right, right. Yes. And we talk, we talk so much. We talk so much on this podcast and I say this on episode three, but, but we've talked about it every episode and I plan to keep doing it. We talk so much about serving your neighbor that this, that this is the career we've picked. Okay. Whether we're an agent or, whether we're in claims, whether we're, you know, whatever we're doing in this industry, we, what, what our job is, is to make people whole when they encounter loss. Okay. And, you know, you, you know, your, your job might be in sales, but if you were just, if, if, if that's, if, if your whole concern was just, you know, selling something at a price, there's a hundred different, industries you could get into but this one is selling is selling the peace of mind and when the worst happens the promise that will be there beside him this is a this is a heavy burden that that we should be feeling and and we should be standing up strong to make sure that we are able to to bear that and that we're taking it seriously. And when somebody comes in and when, when a grown man comes in, who's had multiple policies on their home and they don't have the foggiest clue what any of it does, uh, means I want us as an industry to realize that that is an opportunity to make sure that that person is protected and not simply an opportunity to sell them something. It is that it is that, and we should be trying to get that opportunity too, but it is an opportunity to protect someone. And that is how we as insurance people serve our neighbor. When you're in claims, you know, it's the easiest thing in the world to just it's like, no, 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 this is the wrong form. I need the right form. But you're dealing with somebody in a, in a very stressful and possibly very highly emotional situation. And you need to understand that and you need to honor that. You are there to help them in their hour of need. That's your job. That's an important job. And it's one that we need to take seriously. Like, like I was saying with the, on the agent side, it is a burden, but it, it, it is a burden that you can carry and it's a burden that you need to take seriously. And on the, and you're exactly right because, uh, 
uh, just uh, like you were talking about on the claim side, what what uh, their their burden is, and it's, th- on the sales side, they need to know what they're getting. And I mean, we're not we're not selling snake oil. We're not uh, convincing them that they're getting something that they're actually not. Mm-hmm. The 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 better they understand it the more excited and thankful they are that you sold it to them and that they have it because if something were to happen they cannot come up with the money to to pay for a a, a roof getting uh, damaged or a, a home getting burnt to the ground or a, a car being totaled it, they are in a situation where they just lost something very significant, and because of something that you did week back, years back, whatever it is, you protected them by explaining the, what they had and selling them something that protects them, their family and what they own. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and so. I think that's a, that's a, that's a really good place to shut it down for the day. But before we do, I wanted to tell one story related to this topic. Uh, just to rag on a friend of ours, uh, who, who, who used to work with us, uh, but we were helping him, uh, get licensed and, and something we, we, we often do when, uh, I don't, I don't know about y'all's, uh, y'all states, but, um, recently, uh, recently, the the Department of Insurance in our state has been a little backed up in issuing licenses, and so sometimes when when we're trying to get it pushed through a little bit, we um, we will have our applicant call their state uh, their state congressman uh, to to request some help getting it pushed through, and um, sometimes that's very effective. I've 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 known some other times when it has not been that effective, but uh, it's it's usually worth a try. Uh, but I um uh this this particular fellow who was who was working with us at the time uh, called his state rep. And calmly explained that he had just earned his LSP and, uh, and, and needed to get his license. And of course, the person on the other end didn't have the foggiest clue what he's talking about because licensed sales producer is a very industry specific term. It is not one. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not even sure how widespread it is amongst insurance people. Um, but, that, but he, you know, he was using an insurance term that he didn't understand at the time, explaining it to somebody who didn't have the foggiest clue what it was either. And they just sat in confusion for a little bit until we went over to him. It's like, you, you got, you passed your P and C test, your, you know, your insurance exam. You didn't earn your LSP. <laughs> so that's a special oh, that story great. for, for a friend of ours that we are, relatively sure is listening and i'm sure we will get a text um at at some point probably today (laughs) oh Oh, and there are so many more (laughs) (laughs) oh goodness so um we'd love to hear from you on this um please please do uh please do Write us at it's covered at gmail.com. Come visit us at it's covered.net. I want you to do something for me this week, though. Uh, we've been hearing from agency owners a lot that they really like this, that they really like the show, and we appreciate it. We really do appreciate it. My question for you, though, is are you giving it to your office? Are, are you Are you telling the people you work with about us? Because I, this, this is the kind of stuff that we're going to be dealing with. Look, we're not going to be telling anybody how much we're making, like as agency owners or anything. That's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to make us better insurance professionals. So share, share us with your office. If you've got a buddy down, you know, your uh, drinking buddy down the street who's also an agent, share the podcast. We want to grow together. And so please take the time this week to, 
say, hey, you know, this was a really cool episode that they that they were talking about. It's covered. You totally need to check that out. Here's the link. Uh, we would really appreciate it if you if you would do that for us. And otherwise, we will be back here bright and early Monday morning, ready for your drive into work because we we want to kick off the week with you right we want to we want to kick off the week together excited about what we do realizing that we make a difference realizing that it is important and that that we need to be we need to be serious about it we need to be focused about it we can have some fun and we often do but we're here to protect people and that's a solemn duty and this week this week that's your job that's what you are going to work to do. And so Godspeed as you go. Um, and uh, please do, please do connect with us. Uh, shoot us an email, uh, share us with friends, and we will catch you next week. Bye-bye.